Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm joined by David Votter, who is president-elect for ARLA in 2021. And today we're going to talk about the mental anxiety of being an estate or letting agency boss in 2021. Thank you for joining me today, David. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Um, mental health and everything that's associated with that is something that is a particular passion of yours. Mm. Where do you think a state agent and letting agents, you talk to an awful lot of them in your role as president-elect, yeah. where do you think they are in 2021? In a quandary, I think, a lot of them, because, you know, the first part of last year was locked down and none of us were ready for that. Businesses weren't prepared. You know, a lot of companies weren't working remotely. So now they're probably looking at things thinking, right, we've had a really tough time followed by a really big spell. I mean, let's face it, a lot of the state and letting agents probably had the best years ever since coming out the starting blocks after lockdown. They're probably a little bit apprehensive as to what lies in store for the future. I mean, letting agents, there'll always be properties to let, there's that demand. Estate agency, it, it, it's market trends, isn't it? it? It fluctuates. So a lot of uncertainty, probably. And talking to agents, the best ones, what, how are their mindsets? How are they dealing with the anxiety, this, this fear of the unknown? Or is it more frustration? Combination of both, really, and it's communication, as the old adage, isn't it? Communication is key. So talking with other agents about what they're doing, what works for them. You have all these forums, these groups, you know, LinkedIn works well. It's sharing is, is what a lot of them are doing. I mean, you know, one of the advantages of being an ARLA or a National Association of State Agent Members is that you get to talk to like-minded yeah. people, albeit in different towns, so they're not your competitors. Mm. Have you got an awful lot from talking to, to other agents? Huge amount, huge amount. I mean, I I was um, an ARLA member, you know, I, was, I think I was an ARLA member back in 2010. I became a member and then became a rep in 2016 and then joined the presidential team last year in 2020. So it's kind of gone like that, like you're climbing a mountain, you're going up and you, you're meeting more and more people, you're opening more and more doors and you, you get to speak out about a lot more things. What I'm going through, I say, oh, crikey, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. Others might say, actually, yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm, I've got that. What did you do? And you, you share stories. Now, what, it's not one size fits all. You know, what might work for me might not work for someone else. You know, I find exercise is really good to stimulate my brain to get me in the zone, but others might not be able-bodied to do that. I mean, in a previous video, which we filmed a couple of years ago, you went through the fact that you had a mental breakdown. Mm. Um, and, and the fact that the people that helped you get through that, which is basically your wife and the agents and your team around you, do you think that helped you this time around? No. Well, yeah, actually, my wife did, yeah, because she's always a support. She's always like David, you know, like Lauren spoke about before, you, I trust what you do, I trust your ability, you've got the right integrity, so you, you'll always do well. But when you're a sole trader, you're working alone, you're not going to directors and people like that and, and getting advice. We rely on the likes of Property Mark as our, our oracle and our go-to and our support mechanism. Or more likely the people within that network so you can help get guidance. And Absolutely. And you find that you're going for help, but really you've got the answers. You just don't know you've got them. And in talking to other people, you think, actually, crikey, yeah, I, no, I know I should be doing that. I realise that. And then you make those changes. I mean, a big tip for you is to ask the question because questions get answered, you know, statement gets judged. And Absolutely. again, I, I would strongly recommend that anyone watching this video is that, you know, when, especially when you're dealing and running your own agency, you, you do feel a bit on your own. Yeah. Is it, and I don't care what you say, your other half, who probably isn't to the state agents, have got up you because you, you don't want two estate agents. No, it's, together, it's do you? not I helping. I can, I, can, I can only think of a handful of them, and you know. And they do very well, don't get me wrong, but you know, your other half is too close to the cold face. Yeah. It's taught to like minded other people because a problem shared is you know is a problem half. Absolutely. So please, if you're out there in a state agency, then you know, pick up the phone, 
to another agent. I mean, there's options out there. You could join, you, if you're a member of ARLA, why don't you pick up, or National Association of Estate Agency, why don't you pick up a phone to someone that you met saying, have you got five minutes for a cup of coffee? You just connect. And people, you know, now we're doing more and more face-to-face -face stuff. People want to connect more, and that's the thing. They want help, and a lot of people, you know, they've got to make certain choices. And people want to give help as well. I mean, I'm a founder member of the Agents Together Charitable mm. Foundation, and, you know, um, I tell you what is absolutely fantastic is I, I'm talking to an awful lot of estate agency bosses who are in their 40s and 50s who just feel like they're drifting. Yeah. And what I've recommended they do is do two things. Number one, get mentored by someone through the Agents Together charity. Mm but also mentor someone else, yes. someone who's younger, and you'll be amazed how being, talking to someone who's almost not one step in terms of financial, but just like you know, probably a better person. That's so you. rewarding. Okay, yeah. yeah, also helping someone else. You actually, I, I, I've got a client of mine, I won't mention their name, who was basically hating being an estate agent, full of worry, and now she's not only helping someone else, someone's helping her, and she's like a pig and shit. Mm. She's loving it. And it just really is as simple as that. Isn't it's it? it's really satisfying. And I, you know, going off the subject a little bit, I last night I met up with my cousins, and they're based in this area as well. And there's, you know, the, there's Daniel and there's Alex that are doing quite well for themselves. One's actually the estate agent in Grantham, funnily enough, and the other one is is working in some kind of commercial thing. I should really listen a bit more. And then, you know, they're happy. They're doing what they do. And then there's my other cousin Adam, who's done the same job for 15, 20 years. We all get together, we have fun, but Adam always moans about his life. And he says, he's been saying the same things for 20 years, right? So we made a pact last night. We said, okay, what do you want? What do you want? We all want to achieve similar things, right? So we now, we do a little press-up challenge. So every morning, what's that video? You're doing 25 press-ups, and then we're going to revisit this in August, and we're going to set another target. With Adam, he's moaning about his life, what to do, and he's, he's kind of talking about the same things that he's been doing for years, but he's not making that change. Now, I'm, as you know, very big on mindset, and I've started doing pod, like listening to podcasts, and there's one called The Mindset Mentor on Spotify. And they'll interview people that have really been to the, the depths of despair, and then they come up, and they're amazing now, and they've had to get there to get to where they are yeah. now. You have to hit bottom to yeah. come back up again. I don't care what you say. Yeah, absolutely. And it's about finding those triggers, because some people say... Right, I want to achieve this. I want to make a lot of money, and that will make me happy. Okay, so what you can do with that money? Well, I'll buy a nice house or go on nice holidays. That's what makes you happy. Is that what? It, is that the fulfilment? And then you find people that get there, and they're not fulfilled. You know, they've got all this money, but it's not what they wanted. So, what I would say to anyone out there is find. You know, you live your life authentically. You be honest, right? But then you've got to find what you really want to do. You know, people think they know what they want to do, but really, you've got to dig deep. I know it's quite deep stuff, but dig deep into your soul and think, what actually, what do I what want? It? Yeah, what, what yeah. are you here for? Why? There you go. Well, I think it's been inspirational. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you very much.